So Dave kind of just stole my thunder, so um, thanks. Um, so I have 58 slides in 15 minutes, so um, let's see how this goes. All right, how many of you know CB Insights? Oh, that's not good. How many of you know, that, how many of you get the newsletter? All right, if you don't get the newsletter, please go to cbinsights.com slash newsletter and subscribe now. Um, I'm having a clicker issue. I think I know how to work this. All right, cool. Um, for those of you unfamiliar, we mine lots of data to try to predict technology trends, get our newsletter, almost 170,000 people do. That's me, used to run American Express's innovation fund, started the company a handful of years ago. Um, so I'll save you that. Lots of really smart companies use us. If you want the presentation, tweet at us or me and we'll send it to you on Twitter. So uh, we are a data company, so kind of our view on the world is very data driven. So uh, venture and technology in general are very pundit driven. It's lots of smart people talking at smart people, making stuff up. Um, so we try to bring data to the equation, and so this is sort of our mantra. Um, Dave did steal my thunder, really, so I'm gonna s blow through these. Um, so, yeah, thanks, Dave. Um, so, uh, so I'm gonna cover kind of global U.S. financing trends a little bit. Um, how many of you think the bubble has popped? How many of you, I guess, think there was a bubble? You guys are not being honest. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so yeah, all right, well, this is, should be a two-way thing. You guys need to be honest with me. All right, um, this is kind of what we're seeing, right? So 2015, ridiculous financing year. This is global right here. This is, includes all money into venture-backed companies. So based on our data, this is not just VCs investing in these companies. This is, this is hedge funds, mutual funds, lots of those, um, what VCs will call tourists, uh, which cracks me up. Uh, corporates, everybody's in here. 2015 was a gargantuan year, as you can see here. Um, it's kind of pulled back. Again, to Dave's point, uh, we're still at a level that's way above, you know, if we just continue at this trend level for the rest of the year, we're still way above kind of where we've been historically. 2015, 2015 was sort of exuberant, um, and so kind of that, it's a hard benchmark to, to measure oneself against. This is kind of the deal trend and dollar trend. I think the deal trend is probably the one that maybe is the one to pay more attention to. Lots of uh, challenges, I think, in the earlier stage markets as well as the late stage. You know, it's just harder to get a check these days. So, um, but again, look back over time, uh, it's still at a pretty, pretty healthy level. Um, you know, by stage, kind of the breakdown is, you know, nothing major here. I think you're seeing a little bit of, of uh, pull back at the seed level, um, people are writing larger checks. Um, this is kind of, you know, deal size, right? And so what we're seeing here is an early stage fund that might have had 10 bullets in the chamber before because they were gonna write 10 $1 million checks is now writing larger checks, and so they have kind of few bullets. Um, and this is happening, so people are leaning into their winners a bit more. Late stage is where it's been really crazy. Um, so you see kind of that pullback here. Um, in Asia, th this is global, but in Asia, the late stage deal size average or median was $100 million pretty recently. So massive money coming into the, into the market. This is the US, kind of very similar pullback. Deal trend, also similar. Uh, we track a lot of media, and so there's been a little bit of pullback in just media chatter on unicorns. So. Um, Probably healthy. That that run up is a little ridiculous. So um, so you know I think there's a bit of rationality kind of entering the market. Um, for those of you who are entrepreneurs in the room or or kind of early stage investors, this is a look at sort of Series A and B. Again, you know healthy. The sky is not falling here. Funding at the Series A and B level has continued to stay solid, as has deal activity. Um, you know kind of. This is more quarterly. Median round sizes have stepped up. So this is, again, this idea that people are leaning into their winners a bit more. And so we see that kind of happening over time, um, definitely more so at the Series B stage especially. Um, it's been taking companies less time to get financing. So this, we'll see because as more vintages sort of mature, we'll see if this continues. But um, if you were a hot company, people were kind of wanted to invest in you and were sort of preempting that. And so that was, a sign of the market, um, leverage has shifted back to the investors. Um, and so we'll see maybe if that 
continues, I expect that it will increase. Um, so it'll be a little bit more time between rounds as we go forward. Um, you can get the presentations. I'm not going to spend much time on this. This is kind of most active investors at the Series A within the US, active in Series B. This is in Cali. This is in New York, more in Series B New York. This is kind of every the top most active VC in every state. So you kind of see that this is US. We have some international ones as well. Um, this is my favorite part of this presentation, sort of hot or not industry edition. Um, so we're going to go through a bunch of industries, kind of tell you what the data says, whether they're good or bad. Uh, I'll start easy. Um, you know, it's not, it's not a good one. Um, it's just sort of obvious, I guess. You know, this has been like just a, a pile of hurt for, for everybody. Um, daily deals, this is kind of, again, media trend to daily deals. So again, kind of a, a past star that sort of lost its shine. Um, you know, MOOCs, I'm not sure how you say that. Is it MOOCs? Um, so MOOCs have lost, um, what is it? It's MOOCs, all right, good. Um, I didn't know if it was Mo Ox. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so they've kind of come down as well. Um, this is the new big one, right? So this is big data versus artificial intelligence. So if you're an entrepreneur in the room, my advice to you is somehow sprinkle the word artificial intelligence into your pitch. Um, I suspect that the vast majority of investors don't know what the hell it is, but they will invest in it. Um, so you should sprinkle that into your presentations liberally. Um, they really, you know, investors just cannot get enough of this stuff, right? So that's the deal trend, that's the, uh, the funding trend. Um, within AI, sort of if you look at chat, bot, or bot, that's been the other one. So if you can somehow, you know, kind of have these things sort of form like Voltron, you will do very well. Um, so, uh, so these are helpful tips, hopefully, to you. Um, within AI, we're seeing a lot of applications sort of in healthcare as well. So this is sort of this heat map of, of where the funding is going. Red here is, is higher level of intensity. So healthcare AI applications have been stepping up. Um, E-commerce overall has been having a bad year. Um, you know, it's been a tough market from a deal and, and funding perspective, you know, kind of the worst since uh, 2012. Um, this one is, I'm just going to sort of pick on, you know, subscription e-commerce continues to sort of get deal, um, deal activity. Um, you know, the funding's really kind of, kind of moved down. I, I think it's easy for these companies to raise funding because, you know, people are like, oh, I'm going to do t-shirt monthly or, you know, pineapples or whatever like they do and people will give them money and then these companies are having a really tough time raising follow on funding. But it tends to continue to get media attention. It's sort of understandable barriers to entry in this business are basically nil in the beginning. But for whatever reason, people keep funding these things. Um, this is another hot area, programmatic commerce. So again, a buzzword if you want to throw this into your decks, I recommend you do this. Um, this is a good one because it sort of maps, it's a synergy of Internet of Things and AI. Um, so like, you know, just, just amazing there. Um, so you should, uh, you should try to do that. Um, on demand, so this is, uh, it might be a little hard to see. So t this is a uh, thing we call the business social graph. It shows you the number of investors in the on-demand economy in 2010. And then uh, this was taken last year. That was the number of investors in 2015 year to date. So um, I'm just going to go back to that. Let me just make a point on that. The on-demand economy is basically three companies. It is Uber, Airbnb, and Diddy in China, right? And so nothing else. You could throw Postmates and Instacart in there a little bit. But this has been like this great hope of, of industries. And it's basically been dominated by three companies. And I think investors are starting to wake up to this um, wake up to or this nightmare if they've invested that on demand is, is pretty tough. And people were using the term pretty fast and loose for things that really weren't on demand. Um, Lots of heat around autonomous vehicles. So this is showing you kind of autonomous, self-driving, driverless. Um, what's interesting here is um, the bottom, the orange line is the Google mentions of this. And so what you see in the, for a while is whenever there was chatter about driverless, it involved Google. And you see then towards the end, the, the, the lines sort of now diverge. And what that basically tells you is there's a lot more activity in driverless that's not synonymous with Google. Right? And so we've tracked, I think, about 35 big corporations, not to mention all the startups, but 35 big corporates, whether it's um, 
tech companies or it's automotive companies that now have initiatives to build driverless vehicles or hardware for them. So this space is becoming really kind of um, popular amongst the incumbents. Um, when Cruise got acquired for a billion dollars, um, you know, all the investors started coming up with their autonomous vehicle thesis. Um, so, you know, there's nothing like a billion dollar acquisition to get people excited. So, uh, you know, expect a lot more here. Digital health is hot. Um, it's a space that's kind of, it, and we put a lot under the digital health banner. So this will be everything from healthcare IT to wearable. So there's a lot in here. Um, there really haven't been huge exits. So I think that's what we need to see. But, you know, investment continues at a pretty good clip. Um, you know, within this quantified self, so if you remember that, you know, it's sort of not a thing as much anymore. Um, and this is kind of showing you, this is um, wearable, so we kind of dug into two areas of wearables. So the blue line is sort of wearables focused on clinical or disease kind of specific things, and the right or the orange line is sort of wearables for the more consumer applications. And what you see is that's kind of flatlining while the more disease or, you know, things for Parkinson's or diabetes are stepping up. So that's where we're seeing kind of applications within the wearable space. Um, so that is shifting. FinTech, all things FinTech are really hot right now. Um, it's uh, the big banks and insurance companies and payments companies are all pretty worried about what's happening. So there's a lot of activity here. Um, blockchain is sort of increasing in interest while Bitcoin has sort of subsided a bit. Um, we had a, a FinTech conference last week and Fred Wilson was there and he kind of joked that all the corporates wanna, I think what were his words, let me get some of that blockchain shit were his words. Um, <laughs> So he felt like all the corporations were basically like just clamoring for blockchain without even understanding what the hell it was. Uh, so he kind of chided them pretty hard. It was, it was quite entertaining. Um, and then within blockchain, we see lots of different applications. So we see, uh, you know, it's sort of really branching out into insurance, payments, uh, banking. We're seeing it in crowdfunding, real estate. You know, people are talking about lots of applications of this. Whether they fully understand what the hell it actually is is to be determined, but there's a lot of pilots, a lot of investments going on. Um, and this is probably one of the hottest areas within financial services for sure. Um, cybersecurity, also very hot. We had uh, uh, Ravi from NEA there, kind of, you know, on the enterprise talking about uh, how overfunded cybersecurity is. And so we talked to lots of CIOs. They tell us that they see lots of cybersecurity companies that really are not very differentiated from each other. Um, but you know, every time there's a big security issue, uh, things tend to get hot in this space again. Real estate, uh, you know, really popular area. Um, asset intensive, so when we look at what, who we view as sort of the smart money, Sequoia, Greylock, Excel, um, we notice that they're investing a lot in sort of asset intensive industries, meaning software for mining, for oil and gas, for um, construction, so areas that maybe haven't been digitized a lot, and so we're seeing a lot of activity um, in the asset intensive space. IOT, uh, especially industrial IOT, kind of continues to, to, uh, to be popular. Here, we're just kind of a breakdown of the different applications within the industrial IOT that we're seeing a lot of activity. This is, a lot of this is driven by, in, by legacy companies. I, know, I don't know why corporates tolerate being called legacy, but, um, but uh, you know, Siemens, GE, et cetera. I'm getting the one minute sign. Um, which is good. Um, and the last thing, which is probably in good news, is that business fundamentals are actually kind of a thing again, right? So unit economics have actually begun to be talked about. Um, there's lots of VCs who are writing posts on Medium about um, how like profitability is like this thing you should go after. And <laughs> it's, it's, uh, these are very avant-garde ideas that we appreciate the venture community bringing to us. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, if you, know, if you want the presentation, tweet at us. Please get the newsletter. That's all I got. Thank you.